Okay, firstly, I would like to, okay, thanks, Professor, okay, to accept our, okay, invitation to give us this very exciting talk. So let me give a very brief introduction. I think everybody has <coughs> read, uh, okay, the, the introduction for the Professor Wu, okay. Uh, Professor Wu currently is a director of the department head of the macroelectronics and uh, nanoelectronics. And uh, he is also director of the Institute of Macroelectronics at the Tsinghua University. And uh, he also served as a de deputy director of the Beijing Innovation Center for Future Chips. You know, Dr. Wu, okay, received his uh, PhD degree in electric, electrical and computer engineer from Connell University. And then he worked in the Silicon Valley as a, a senior engineer and a manager okay, te a technology scientist. And after, after that, he go back to Tsinghua University in 2009. Now his research interests okay, include emerging memories and the neuromorphic computing technologies. Uh, Dr. Wu has published a lot, a lot of papers, including and, and uh, uh, also own more than 90 US and China patents. So he published a paper, including some nature, you know, we just uh, read that very exciting paper and the nature non technology. And there are a lot of papers on the special and the, in the uh, very large uh, VLSF journal, and especially for the electronic devices. I know that's a very tough journal. And also Dr. Wu has served as the you know, uh, program committee chairs for 2021 uh, EDTM conference and also TPC members of the VLSI technologies and a lot of okay conference, okay. You know, he also was the recipient of the 2019 Explore Prize National Science Foundation for Distinguished Young Scholars and the China Industrial University Research Corporation Innovation Award and the Beijing Outstanding Young Talent Award. So this is a brief introduction. Now let's welcome Professor Wu give his talk. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank, you for the, thank you, Professor Chen. And uh, it's my great pleasure today and uh, you know, to, uh, to present our view and our work regarding the new world of computing. And uh, it's really prestigious to talk to the as the uh, the professor students in the National University of Singapore is a very beautiful, very famous university. It's really a prestigious, and uh, and uh, and so today my talk we are talk about uh, the amorphic computing with memristors and uh, from device to system. Because uh, my background actually my bachelor is actually from material science. And now I'm in the microelectronics, and actually our work is spent from material device to circuits and system. So I'm going to, today I'm going to talk about from this uh, five parts. I want to give a little overview, my view, okay, the understanding of this uh, history of computer development, then talk about the hardware challenging and the progress of SIM. Then I will talk about a little bit about dendrite device, then my perspective for the future. So first, you know, for computing device, actually right now the variety is getting more and more. You can see you have a smartphone, you have a pad, you have a laptop, and certainly you have bigger servers, okay? So they have all different servers. So all, but doesn't matter different way of the computing device, but they actually all uh, are uh, turning machine if you look at all their system. So if we look at the, uh, the most important foundation to move this computing device forward, actually one is the Turing machine. So if you look at Turing machine, you know, so they have, they have this paper you know, so actually, if you look at the Turing machine, actually a few important parts. One is they have a tape and reader, so it's more like a, a, a you know INO input and output, and then they have a, this control mechanism storage. They have memory, so they they will, will, will store the memory, right? Then they have this control mechanism, so more like a CPU. So it's actually they already include the I/O memory and the CPU different ways in this Turing machine. And if you look at the Current classical computer. This is the right right part of the graph. Is actually I draw this graph. So I look at this uh, classical computer. In the in the bottom, we can look at the actually the fundamental device is transistors, right? Right. We use the MOSFET, we use the FinFET, or now we are looking for the GAA transistor. So it's a transistor. This is a fundamental device, and uh, 
and the, the way how to do computing, actually our computer is based based on Boolean logic operation. Okay, so they use they have this uh, and uh, and law different ways, right? And so this this is all the law. So there's different ways to for this Boolean logic operations, and certainly. And as you know, this volume architecture is very critical for our computer technology forward. And with those kind of transistor Boolean logic operation, volume architecture, we can make the CPU, GPU processors. We can have a different memory uh, chips. And above that, we have we, we use assembly language or instruction set. Then we have a compiler. We have programming language. Then they have the application software. So I think it doesn't matter if it's a smartphone or it's a Laptop or is a is a pad, or even bigger server. Actually, I think this whole architecture, the computer, is very similar. You know, they have a bottom transistor Boolean logic operation and the volume architecture. So let's look at look at the back. The, the history actually the history is very interesting. So first of all, this 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 uh, uh, when we do look at the Boolean logic, it happened at least when I found it on the computer. Okay, is actually 1944 for 42. So the purpose actually try to solve the linear equations, okay? Because in the in the class to solve the linear equation is very tough. So the professor John in the Iowa State State College, so he invented this ABC, which he found out is the first uh, computer. The in total uh, about three hundred vacuum tubes. The weight is three hundred three hundred twenty kilogram. And there was a computing power at that time. The computing power is 30 every second, okay, 30 additions or 30 subtractions. So it's very small computing power. This is 1942. But they started to use the Boolean logic in the computer, okay? So it's 1942. Then if, we, if we look at 1946, what happened? This is the first programmable electronic general purpose computer, ENIAC. Okay, it's electronic, you're, you're more. New, 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 numerical integrator and the calculator. So this is the purpose for this computer is for calculator, artillery firing tables for the army. Okay, because they have this army, they want to look at this how this uh, ballistic way, the, the, and the, they want to understand that. So this also invented by the University of Pennsylvania. So they also use the vacuum tube. Okay, they still use the vacuum tube. Okay. But at that time, the, the way they achieve every second, they can achieve about 5,000 addition or 5,000 subtraction, also about 400 uh, multiply. Okay. And, but you can look at it, they have 27 tons, huge, because it's from 300 to become 18,000 and uh, occupy 167 square meters and use 150 kilowatts. Okay. And in 1942, 46, very importantly, when Numa they published his paper called the first draft of a report on the advac and he published in 1945 so this was used in the in the 1946 machine so this is volume architecture so they 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 met, they have proposed this architecture so this computer architecture is described by by john von Neumar and his colleagues and very critical you know to make this memory and the computer and computing part separate so this becomes the mainstream architecture so this is happening in 1946. And then one year later, in 1947, this is the invention of a transistor, as everyone knows, right? So this is the first bipolar transistor was born at AT&T Bell Lab. And uh, in 1954, the first transistor-based computer, Tridic, was built at a Bell Lab. So at this time, 1942, 1946, and 1947, so they, in that uh, very short time, okay, and six years only. Actually, I think these three foundations are uh, happening at that time. The Boolean logic, the transistor, the volume architecture. So I think those three things still are the very critical parts for our modern computer. Okay, modern computer. That, that's my understanding. As you can see, when they use the transistor, actually then the power consumption, everything, space, you know, and the weight become much reduced. And after that, as you know, the, this Moore's law driving this transistor technology very rapidly, right? So we increase every 18 months, we have double the density and then make the transistor smaller and smaller. And so this is actually for the past 50, 
past almost 60 years become the major driving force to make our computer stronger and stronger. And that, that time, most of important things is make the transistor smaller because this transistor is the, 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 the best device. And they just try to put more transistors in the same area to make the chip computing power stronger. Okay. So, so I, I, as you can see, the, the, the title of the paper is called Cramming More Components Onto Integrated Circuits. So just try to make a, put a more components transistor in the in the in the in the in the, in the chip. So that's very critical. So this is this is my view for the computer development. I think this is important when we look at back what happened right now. If we talk about the morphic computing or we say computing in memory. The second part I'm going to talk about hardware challenges. So why we are looking for the this computing in memory or neomorphic computing? Because we are facing a lot of challenges. And these challenges cannot be solved by current uh, technologies. First of all, you know, the AI era is actually coming to everywhere. We can see the translation smart home and then AI health, voice uh, re recognition. And also we have lots of cloud, you know, we, we use a lot of in, in China, you know, the TikTok and the Quasso and different ways has been used rapidly. They are, they are very attractive and they need lots of AI technology. So they have to buy lots of GPU, lots of CPU to serve the AI applications. And the, not only the price very, very high, but also the poor consumption is very high. So this is a, actually one, the one graph I try to plot. So if we look at uh, this graph here, it's very interesting because this uh, uh, black squares, okay, is actually uh, from Intel. So Intel tried to see what happened for this computing power change. The horizontal axis is actually the years. The vertical axis is actually for the computing power per chip, okay, chip flops. So if you look at it in general, actually this is a major time. Actually we can see our compu computer chip, the computing power increased dramatically. But uh, starting from like 2005 or, or so, you can see the increase become much slower, much, 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 much slower. The reason because, certainly because, you know, the Moore's law becomes slowed down. And also because we also have this standard uh, scaling law. So we can, we cannot make it cheaper so poor hungry that it will make the heat too much and it will burn the chip. So both uh, laws apply to this one make the chip performance increase slower and slower. This GPU is actually somewhere I add here. So you can see this NVIDIA GPU. You can see the GPU in general is about one order higher than CPU, one or two order uh, for general purpose. Okay, for general purpose. But in, in contrast, this red dots, is actually come from the open AI report. You can find out before the 2011, 2010, 2011. So, and actually the, the, the AI, the algorithm requires the computing power is double every two years. So similar to the Moore's law. But from that, because people start to use the GPU to train, the, the, the algorithm become more and more complicated. You can find out it's double, doubles every 3.4 months. So very fast, okay? So even right now, even we use the most advanced GPU, if you want to train the Alpha Go Zero, use many, many GPUs, still take a few months, okay? So compared to human brain, it's still kind of slow, I mean, for, for certain intelligent applications. So this is the one, ch you can see this is the challenge for the, the, the hardware with this demand, okay? The reason for that, because I think, uh, because increasing the computing power for the chip is getting harder and harder. One thing is because, you know, the Moore's law becomes slower down, right? We know this year we are mass production five nanometer. Then we go to three, we go to two, then we probably go to 1.7, then we go to 1.5. You can see, actually, if you look at the chain length, actually the chain length is kind of about 12 nanometer. They are not that scaling down that quickly because of the shutter channel effect. And uh, also be, when you try to drive down, because you want to make the power consumption lower, so you make uh, the IO uh, uh, lower uh, uh, power supply. 
and also you have lots of you know variation challenges. And another thing, this is John Henderson and David Patterson. They published a paper. They also mentioned this. This this actually the benefit from the architecture innovation also becomes smaller and smaller. So the so they said they said actually recently it's only three percent per year increase. You can see this graph here. So this is a performance. So so in general, this gain from architecture and also from device both becomes slow down. So this is the big the increasing computing power become harder and harder. A second challenge is actually with Neumann bottleneck, because if you look at the actual right now, we have the CPU, we have the SRAM, we have register SRAM, uh, DRAM, and the flash and the hard disk. And then what do you find out? Actually, the data bus between CPU and the main memory, like DRAM, become a major bottleneck. And also the own chip memory SRAM density is very limited, also become a bottleneck. Because when our algorithm become more complicated, you need a lot of memory, okay? So SRAM, is a 6T, six transistors cannot support that. If you look at the right part, it's actually from Intel report. So if you look at the Intel in the 10 nanometer, so they are, this, is, this is actually for, uh, for their uh, data transfer, for the data reading from DRAM, is already occupied more than 60%, actually it's 69% of total energy at the time. So this is really huge. Okay, just to transfer data and reading the memory data not to include the writing data. So this become a, a bigger bottleneck. So the memory is much slower than CPU and the frequent data shuffling causes a significant delay and the power consumption. So this we call the memory war and the power war, different you know, way to describe this bottleneck. And the, but if you compare the, the, the AI requirement for like AlphaGo, okay, you know, very famous 2016, they use a 166, 76 GPUs and the more than 1,000 CPUs. They consume more than 150,000 watts. In comparison, Jake, okay, he lose the, the game, but uh, he, his human brain, the, the volume is only about 1.2 liter, much smaller, okay? And when he is thinking, normally when people are thinking, they consume about 20 watts. So I think this is a big difference, the volume and also the, the power consumption. So we believe it's, it's become urgent the demand for new device and new architecture to develop new AI chips. And certainly the new device require new physics and require new material, require new process. So and the more and more people believe the material innovation and the more innovative way to use material become more and more important because in the old days it's digital. So you don't have to think about, about other ways, but not this because the application requires a lot of computing power and the MOSFET cannot deliver enough computing power. MOSFET or FinFET or GAA, they, I, they will continue moving forward, but I, I think it's also very important looking for other ways. So people doing different ways, I mean, especially for the cheaper field. You know, we have CPU, GPU, so for sure. We have this kind of Google TPU, so they actually try to bring memory closer and closer to computing. Recently, there are lots of you know, uh, application-specific uh, AI chip. Many, many companies, many, many startups in China are booming up. And uh, today we have a meeting we talk about kind of more than a thousand chip companies are happening. So, but uh, most of them, or, or, almost all of them are trying to looking for the specific applications, okay, like uh, voice, uh, re recognition, they try to make it extremely low power. And also another way is actually to the same computing in memory. That's also a very big uh, trend, especially more and more people looking for analog computing in memory. And the people use SRAM, use flash, also people use the memory, including RAM and the other emerging device. So third part, I want to talk about the progress of computing in memory. We call SIM. So memory store is a very, very interesting uh, device. Actually, you know, you know, Leon Chuang called this a missing circuit element, right? In this, uh, we have this resistor, capacitor, inductor. If you look at this one, we can think about like a, a memory store. So this is, he predicted the memory store in 1971. But in general, the, in the big device, actually it's very tough to make a memory store and uh, how to use that. But very importantly, in the 2008, the HP, try to produce a nano memory store in the nano device field, which makes this uh, technology move forward. 
So look at this very slash. I think it's it's actually they have don't have very high battery because it's a two terminal device. You have a top electrode, a bottom electrode. Then in this switching layer, you, you could have one layer, you could have two layer, you could have triple layer. And I think the way how to tune in the, the interface is actually quite critical. Even till now, I think the we are still looking for better uh, memory device. We are not satisfied with our existing existing device yet. And uh, and uh, when uh, under certain condition, you can form in the conductive filaments. And uh, then when you have with other other parts, it actually a pulse, you can make you can break this uh, filament, then you achieve the high re low resistance or high re resistance. But it's very interesting. This is actually for memory. So people use this to do the cross bar, cross point array to, to achieve high density memory. Very interestingly, because actually people find out because this uh, filament you can control, somehow you can control where to break and uh, how much you know this gap. And uh, this is tuning this gap, tuning the position, you can achieve different resistance. And uh, this resistance in some way is a normal type. It's probably cannot, uh, cannot serve, survive for 85 degrees C 10 years, but maybe it can survive like a week or so. And for many AI application, maybe it, it could, could be enough. And the people find out this kind of tunable, continuous and reversible conductance switching is actually very similar to the biological snaps. So we call this artificial electrical snaps. And this actually make a, this memory a, a, a new boom and, the, and the people are looking for, because memory actually is really NAND and other ways is already in, in the application. And actually neomorphic computing gave this memory a, a big boom, a big boost. So the reason for this, Seem with memory is very interesting because if you look at the the right part, because in the all the AI AI uh, algorithm, in many many cases you have this vector times vector or vector times matrix in many many places, and uh, in the if you use the older circuit, you have you need a register, you need a memory, you need a logic computing, and you need a sh data shift very complicated and also need a lot of uh, 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 clock cycles. But in this case, if you make this X1, X2, XM as this V1, V2, VM as voltage, could be voltage amplitude, could be voltage pulse numbers, make this uh, matrix G11, G21, GM1 as this device, okay, this device, the conductance of the device. In this case, when you apply all the voltage, actually the voltage, times the conductors, you get the current is uh, multiply. Then all the current put together, they, they add, add, add up, will get the total current. This, this is sum, so the addition. So actually very naturally use the Ohm's law and the Kirchhoff's law, we can finish the multiply and the addition. So this is very nice. So we actually computing on physics. And uh, certainly this is a, this is a uh, analog weights. Is different with the digital weights, then how to solve that is some challenge we need to face. But this at least give you a bigger saving, saving on the on the on the you know not moving any data. Saving also don't have to read the data anymore, and uh, and uh, and uh, you know because in old days you have read and the, and the transfer over over to the computing part, right? So this is very uh, very attractive. If we die right now, if I come back to this graph. Nor the this cornerstone for a computer could be very different. But in this case, the computing device become transistor plus memory. Okay. So in the old days, everything is transistor. Nor could it be transistor plus memory. So this is one difference. Second, not only just Boolean logic, but also we can the computing, you know, the this this is this computing actually is based on physics. We use Ohm's law or and the Kirchhoff's law, and certainly we can put a, 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 a other fix into the circle. Okay, and also in the this memory part is called the C architecture, computing in memory architecture is not a new architecture. In this case, certainly we need the, the 
same instructions set. We also need the same compliant. We, we, the target is we don't have to change the program language. We don't have to change any application software. And because transistor, we can do the digital computing. Memory store, we can do the analog computing. So this could be the hybrid or mixed computing. And I, we hope this could be a more intelligent computing. So that means we can combine the fast digital computing, also fast analog computing. And then we can achieve lots of intelligent computing. Uh, so then I will talk about the progress. I want to put the three stage. The stage one is device design and optimization. Okay, we try to optimize the device. Stage two is I will I, I put as a real level SIM demonstration. Okay, it's not only one device. Stage three is a SIM chip and a system implementation. I will talk about it one by one. Okay, so I put some work over here. If you look at the memory system de de development. Uh, Stan Lim in the 2008 is the first experimental demo of Memorist. Two years later, Professor Wei Lu in the University of Michigan, that time he already mentioned this is the artificial snaps published in Nano Letter. And Daniel uh, from the uh, Milano, he used the compliance the reset cards to control the film and the formation. And the prof Professor Joshua Young, he recently moved to the uh, University of South, South California, USC. So he actually find out the dynamics in the memory system. Okay, so they, they actually, so not just the non-volatile, could be volatile type of memory system, and also for volatile snaps and other applications. So I think those are very important work for the device. I think still, including my group, are trying looking for better, better device. So this is a paper that we actually published in last in the nature of electronic times of analog memory There are lots of different ways to look at that. And uh, if you look at this one here, in the binary RAM, we are looking for really as sharp as possible. But in this uh, bi-directional analog RAM, we are looking for linearity, okay, the linearity, uh, symmetrical, how symmetrical it is. We also, the uniformity, we are looking for cycle-to-cycle, -cycle, device-to-device -device variability. And I will talk about reliability because in this computing, the retention and endurance is different with memory. Certainly you can look at the O of ratio, how many analog states yield, retention, endurance, symmetrical, linearity, and the different ways. This is, if you, for more details, you can read this paper. So I think to make the analog switching better and better is very important. So actually, we try a lot of way to do that. We, we, are, we are still have still have lots of students working in this field. For example, we in our device, we actually try to try to modulate, try to achieve linearity. We we insert a we call the electro thermal modulation layer (ETML) layer. For more detail, you can read these two papers. Okay, one in the EDR, one in the VSI. So finally, we can achieve this thirty-two states. Okay, five bits with identical paths. And right now when we make the chip or whole system, we still use uh, 16 levels, four bits, because four bits is still more stable. And also for many important applications, actually four bits is, uh, is enough. Certainly in the future, we are looking for five bits or six bits. This is, this is still something I'm looking for. So I think uh, this area is very fundamental, very important. And actually in this field, materials, device, and the physics, and those process are very important to us. Variability. So as I mentioned, you could have, because this variability is different with previously because, because in, the, in the previous, you probably we are looking for only just a uh, uh, high HIS and LIS, but right now we have 16 levels. So how to define variability? And we still don't have all the answer yet. But, but sometimes we are thinking because this analog computing, you have to admit you, you, you have some crossover, okay? It's very tough to make a 16 level no crossover if you look, look at any tail bits or any distributions. So we, we, in our case, we try to aim in certain, you know, in certain range, you will be within that uh, small uh, distribution. But we allow uh, uh, some distribution uh, outside the, 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 the target area and we then use the algorithm the circuit to try to tolerate that. So this is the way we try to solve that. This is actually a paper we published in JP, try to solve the device-to-device -device variation. In this case, we actually make this 
hydrogen oxide, aluminum oxide, the molecule in a one by one layer by ALD. So this way we try to use aluminum oxide because the aluminum and the hydrogen they have with uh, these two ions have different con different force to to uh, uh, to uh, to attract the, the uh, oxygen ions. So the oxygen ions could be more stable and in the uh, in, in this filament and control their location. So this is some way we try to do that. Reliability retention issue. So it's very interesting because in the, and also for, I, I strongly recommend if you want to do this, not only in study the single trans, single device is important to do the array, even small array. Because, because when you do computing, every device will make, will, will, will play in a row. So, and so their variation their distribution are critical for the final accuracy. And but another thing very important I I like to talk to you is actually, uh, and for many applications where I've talked to some important customers, potential customers or in a lot of companies, they actually they don't uh, look. In, they are not looking for really eighty five degrees C ten years. They said that even you can do a week or a month or so will be good for them. They they can allow. To reload the data because they always deal with DRAM, SRAM, so it's different. So they always can can think about that. So this is certainly we are gaining for uh, multiple levels, but we are losing some retention ability. So it's allowed. Okay. Endurance. Endurance is also very interesting because we know for the RM many cases probably endurance for single device people can demonstrate like a ten to twelve or ten to ten. For big array. Uh, cheaper, like one meg or a few big. The most of the reported data are more like 10 to 6 to 10 to 7, like Panasonic, like TSMC. But then, but that's only one, you know, just two levels. If you go to 16 levels or 32 levels, how can we really achieve 10 to 6 or 10 to 7? Very tough. You can imagine that. But very interestingly, because in that case, in that case, they are looking for actually, you know, from very low resistance to very high resistance. But in the AI, artificial intelligence, for the training, when they try to tune in the device resistance, they actually do not go that far away. They, they're more like a general training, a general change the resistance. It's like a, like a, a, a rubber band. If you make it a full range, maybe you have a certain break the rubber band. But if you ever did it, you can do much, much higher, and much, much longer endurance. So we do a test. As we find out, you know, we can by making small, small range of this switching, you know, on the, uh, to ten to five times longer endurance, we can achieve like ten to the ten or ten to eleven for a real level. Okay, so this is very good. This also give us more confidence because we are thinking using memory store. Another advantage is we can do the own chip training. Okay, so with the device, then we think about it, only one device is not enough to so do a really very important. So that's why, because the new, new, net, new network simulation also uh, based on a single device are not uh, convincing enough. So we need some array data. So this is stage two, memory the array level sim demo. This is a demo from UCSB in 2015. All work case in 2017, we have 128 by eight array. <coughs> we do the face. Uh, classification, Professor Wang K array to the sparse coding, the Joshua Yang from University of Massachusetts to the 8K array for the MNIST uh, uh, classification. So this is different array level dem demonstration. For what we did, we actually do the hybrid integration of CMOS and memory stores. So we actually, we really uh, do 80, on 80 inch wafer, we try to solve lots of process issues. So in the foundry, we can do a CMOS and bring back to do the in our lab or in other uh, lab to make this integration happen. So this is the process we developed. This is the eight inch wave we have. So this is some process we solved. So at the end, we can uh, achieve the eight, more than three nine yield. And with, with that also another important thing is we need to do a, we find out if you do it with the, with the array, we can do actually do some emulator. Hardware later, because we want to, because with the array, you have a lot of flexibility to control individual device. You can give all the support. So we build up this emulator. 
So here we can we can put a one chip, we can put a multiple chip. And recently, the, the array size can be from one K to four K. Recently, we are developing four K multiple array there. We can do a, a max size. We are looking. We are trying to do max size. This kind of emulator. So then we can do more complicated task. But in this case, all the power supply, everything, all the control by FPGA by outside, but all the computing is inside. So this we call emulator. So by this one, we can do the arbitrary weight mapping. We can do automatic neural network deployment. And also we have this, we, have, we try to do the flexible SDK framework. So we can do different uh, tasks, more complicated tasks. This is something is also, we, we work on this one right now. So with that, we, we also did some work. One is this uh, published in 2017, digital communication. Because when, when I begin with the neighborhood computing, at the beginning, I don't uh, think this can work because if you look at the single device data, I think it's, it's really bad. You know, it's, you can see lots of variations. I think it's uh, very tough, but uh, I support, support my students doing innovation. So he did this uh, three-phase classification very su surprisingly, because we only use the 960 device, I can achieve almost 95% uh, accuracy. That's very important. So now I realized, actually the AI algorithm, they have naturally have tolerated the single device, no, no idea of factors, because they are looking for the final results. Okay, we don't have to make every device the best, but we want to make the whole system the best. So this is very different concepts. So, so this really, as your friend speaking, I, I did the three major work in re recent five years. Every time the hardware results is better than simulation results. That's also very interesting, but certainly because all simulator, simulation writer is not, a, not good enough to capture all the details, uh, all, uh, many, many things. So that's why our simulation is not that good. But this, this, this is also, this is one of the first hardware experiments, actually the results is better, okay? I don't want to describe all details, but in, anyway, in general, we put a, a full connect network uh, on the array, we do the deployment, and uh, we do the training, then we do a test, we get, we get the good results. And then actually about uh, uh, in 2016, that time, because many, many people have the simulation data set, uh, well, your chip, your A is good, but because all data is to the AD conversion or DA conversion, so then if you put everything together, that will be the huge part, okay? And nobody have the full chip to do the data, they all, everyone is simulation. So at that time, I was worried. If this is the case, that means this computing memory cannot go too long because in competition, in comparison, you don't have all the advantages. So I, I want to look at uh, what happens to the periphery part. Because even it's a periphery part, but they consume most of the power, they consume most of the time, then become a major bottleneck. So I want to I want to understand that. So actually in the early 2016, we started a project, we try to design to implement the full system chip. So this is actually, I look at uh, myself, but also I see interesting, at the same time, many companies, many research groups also did the same work. See Panasonic in the, it is a macro, okay, for the MLP. And the uh, National Tsinghua University also with TSMC, it was a macro for CNN. And the Stanford with Tsinghua, Philip Wang with, with my group together, we do the macro for the IBM, published last year's ICCC. And for us, we have this full chip, we also do the MLP, published last year's ICCC. And also be, besides that, we also, Use some array, array together, build a small system for CNN publishing this year's nature. So I want to describe a little bit. So one thing very important when you build a full chip or bigger bigger system, very important is simulator is important. We we develop some simulator, including the memory memory device model, array macro, you need to consider IR job, architecture the chip, you need to think about the world. How, how big size is your array, and also algorithm by mapping. So we put this device end to algorithm end the simulator. We, des we develop this one. We also put this on GitHub. So if you are interested, you can look at that. And 
the simulator we designed our chip, and actually in that time it's mixed. Okay, we did a, do something on the chip, but in general, right now we, we now we want to use our simulator to guide that, to guide our design. I think it's very important because the commercial EDA tool they cannot support this. They, they are far away from that yet. So in this chip, we also did some uh, innovation like a low power adjustable resolution ADC from one bit to eight bit, so it can tunable because we want to see um, uh, uh, if we reduce the resolution of ADC, how this will impact the final results, resolution of ADC to the power consumption to the accuracy. We have this uh, uh, sign with the T2R design, so we can have positive and also negative sign-based back propagation. That means in the back propagation, normally we give a very detailed, say, how far you need to change the weight. But in this case, we only give signal, go up or go down. The reason because I think, uh, you know, we also have a single design ex expert here. If you want to really tune a single device to a certain weight, it's very time consuming, energy consumption is not good for the whole system. But if you only give the direction go up or to go down, it's much easier, right? So that's maybe to the SPP. So, so you, you can see that you know, because we really develop the chip, so you have to think about lots of other factors. So you have to think about it to you know to meet the whole system performance and the accuracy of speed and the power. So you have to do uh, something new to do that. And uh, with that uh, chip, actually, this actually we use the uh, Raspberry Pi. Twenty eight of them is a four core CPU. So very interesting, actually, all we, with the same algorithm, we can achieve similar accuracy, 95%. Sometimes this is slightly lower, sometimes slightly higher. So this is compared to analog computing. But uh, the speed is 20 times faster. This is actually 59 seconds. The peak power here is achieved 78.4 TOPS per watt. It's like a thousand times higher than here. So this is very encouraging. So if we break it down, we can see the ADC, DAC is still a big part, but it's not a 95%. We are finding out registered driver, water driver, iron marine, 7% and sustain driver. So you know, there are, that means many, many things have to think about. So that's why I mentioned the, how to do some uh, analog transfer. Data transfer is also very important. This will save a lot of, lots, lots of, lots of energy and time. And if you compare it to some other chips, you know, we can find out this is actually certainly much better than TPU, uh, much better than CPU and GPU is also is better than ASIC uh, TPU. So this is very encouraging because this is a full chip. We have all the <coughs> IO. We have this, this chip actually even can do the own chip uh, learning. So we are still working with the own, own chip learning part yet. We are we haven't published results with that chip yet. We are trying to write a paper soon. This is only for inference. Uh, this is for the multiple array. I, I don't want to uh, talk too much. The key problem is say most of the demo in that time, because this work we started about 2017, we spent in the multiple layer perception. But how about CNN? Because CNN is the most convolution layer that work, is the most popular one. But then they have a convolution. They have four, four, four connection. But how can we do a parallel convolution operations? And how can we deal with this error accumulation? Okay, then how can we realize other operators without except this VMM vector multiplier matrix? So we try to demo this five layer CNN LearNet for the MDS data set classification. Professor Wu, okay. So this okay. is actually. Uh, Professor Wu, okay. I think okay. this is. A, uh, can you, five minutes? Can you finish? Okay, yeah, okay. I see. Okay, that's the time. Okay. I'm, I'm I will go. Okay. Already. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is the system architecture. This is actually the, the hardware photo. Okay. So this is actually one over here. So this is actually one hardware to a parallel. And uh, another thing, this parallel try to input the speed. Okay, because, uh, but actually, because this parallel convolution is also quite a challenging. And I pass in more detail, you can read the paper. I think our paper is give a lot of details. And to the hybrid training, because when do the analog computing, the 
the part is actually find out uh, because of some in situ training, we still use this this technique in all. This is for the committee member. I think I want to talk about a little bit about the dendrite. Uh, because if you look at the, our brain, it's actually not only snaps neuron, but also have dendrites. And, uh, and this is actually a paper, it's a real paper for advanced material. This actually, I think is a very good paper. You can read that because this is actually compare from the bottom ion channels to the snaps or neuron to dendrite, to the a small network, to the brain. And we also have comparison for the bio part to the electronic part. And what we find out is dendrite actually in the most part dendrite is missing. Okay, we often we talk about snaps in the neuron, and uh, and this is the neuron, this is snaps, but dendrite is missing. Then we think about, uh, but if you look at this graph, it, it's very interesting. As somebody said, uh, actually you find out uh, in the different animals and in the human brain, uh, dendrite is the longest in the human brain. Even some professor said uh, the length of dendrite is very critical for intelligence. This is very interesting claim, okay? And uh, certainly dendrite is at a different location, okay? There's different snaps here. Different, all the different dendrite location close to a soma or far away from soma, they have pretty different roles, okay? Some receive snap input across different cortical layer and mainly handle feedback input. Okay, some mainly handle feed forward input. So they have different roles, very important. They also have a spatial, have a different location, also have a temporal signal, they process them. And as people also realize that what we did is actually try to use another uh, dynamic memorist to do this artificial dendrites. Uh, this is the last thing in nature nanotechnology, you can look at them. So basically, we find out this, it's a volatile, volatile device, but they actually very similar to part of the dendrite function. And so we propose, we have this SNAPS device, dendrite device, SOMA device. We propose that that work become this way, the new neuron and also SOMA together. So we split off these two parts. And this link is, is fixed, okay, it's fixed, okay. And we believe this dendrite can make the, the power much uh, efficient because dendrite can filter the integrate. That means all the SOMA signal come to dendrite. If they cannot pass this threshold, they filter the signal, they don't go to a SOMA. Because you can think about if all the snap signal go to the so dendrite to the SOMA, you will have got a lot of firing. That's lots of energy consumption. So actually biology told, told us 90% of snap signal has been filtered, okay? So anyway, we built up this system here, snaps, uh, dendrite, and soma together, we achieve the same time improvement, okay? And the accuracy is still good. And this is the, that's what I mentioned. This is interesting, in this nature review last year, they also put this, this uh, network here is very similar to what we proposed. We form the actual part, this is from biology park. And uh, you know, this is just has, dendrite actually has very complicated function and dynamics. I think uh, for material device guide, you can look at the different, uh, different papers, give you lots of ideas and you can achieve lots of interesting results. This is, uh, this is uh, the paper we mentioned here, okay? This is actually our advanced material. We put all the table here, all the comparison here, you can look at it. This could give you a lot of insights. Okay, finally, I think uh, what we are trying to do, we develop a new computer system with the computing in memory. And uh, so in this case, the bottom all the difference, you know, and we try uh, this what I mentioned with the, with, we have this little map. So we have fusion in the 3D to achieve some certain parameters like the human brain here. And they have a lot of key changes. I want to say the device optimization, large scale integration, peripheral circular design, architecture, air co optimization, ETL tools and the software, analog computing theory, mathematical theory, and also key applications. Okay. Okay. So at the end, I want to thank you all for your attention. And I think this is neuromorphic computing. Today I'm talking about SIM. It's very promising. I think it's still, but still require lots of attention and support and research to make it happen. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Professor, for the 
the okay very very excellent okay ex exciting report. So, uh, I think we first of all we can panel discussion and also for the attend attendee. Okay, if you have any question, you can write uh write in. Okay, in the chat. Okay, Q A. Okay, we can ask the professor. Okay. Okay, Kevin, and uh, yeah, then sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. Wu. This was a wonderful talk. I, I really like your uh, your summary, and it's really beautiful work. Uh, I have a question about this uh, programming. Actually, these uh, systems, you know, you how do you actually program such sensors? Because uh, I mean, this this uh, computation uh, device. Because typically, you know, uh, software guys are used to you know see see you know these te languages that are very uh you know, traditional, right? So is that, do we need to invent new programming language for such processes? Now, this is a very good question because as I mentioned, actually, we are not thinking to make a new programming language. Actually, we think to try to use a compiler uh, to solve this issue. So basically, you still can use your own uh, programming language and, uh, and uh, for, especially at the beginning, and, uh, you know, for some AI applications, we can deliver, uh, you, we can use a, a compiler Routing all the pre all the co computing to this this chip and for some digital part to this digital computing part. So also I don't believe this simulated model computing can replace the existing digital computing. I think this is very good. So I think I think what we did is try to add the analog computing part, this is the sim part, or the morphic computing part, to make all the computers stronger and better. And uh, so and for to build as make the the software guy not half, so this is a bigger, bigger, bigger group there, right? So I think it's important. Uh, don't make a new challenge for them. You, they right. can still use their own program language and make the compliance more stronger. Yeah, that's my opinion. Yeah, I see. I see. Cool. Yeah, wonderful. I just have one more short question. Uh, I, you know, there's generally a lot of issues as you start to do this, right? Do you foresee this can be what architectures can solve this fan out? Uh, yeah, and, okay. Yeah. So you know, have just so many leads and wires going into a device, right? Are there challenges in the fan out? Mm -hmm. uh, I I think actually, so far we what do we find out is actually what what we find out is actually make the the scale fan is the system bigger is actually better, and it's very interesting because the reason because, uh, uh, I think this, this is a two two part for the AI algorithm. Because uh, for the if, if in the computing memory, in my case, if you look at the, the most important part, is not a single device, but also the array size. So array size is actually critical when we decide the, that, because make the array very big, the problem is the IR drop and other things come in. Make the array very small, actually all the variation will kill the accuracy for system. But in general, what we find out is on the chip array size is one important. Another thing is the chip density. So how many memory or RAM on the same chip is very important. Right now, we are, we are building a chip with 400, uh, 4 million uh, memory on a single chip. Next, I'm thinking if in a few years, we can build like more than 100 million memory on one chip. Actually, you will find out that it's maybe, uh, I, I, this is some theory I did. Maybe the, the intelligent work is better. The reason because the computing power is stronger, and also the error, the error because of some up and down, you have more st statistical data to, to use the algorithm to control them. And so this is why I, I think for final, from my opinion, I, I, I don't uh, worry too much, but uh, certainly we need to optimize the device. Right. This is really, really exciting. Yeah, I look forward to uh, further discussions. Very cool, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Prof. Uh, I don't hear from IME Singapore. So I have mm -hmm. a few questions from the, from the audience. <laughs> The okay. first question is um, the, the computing power, I mean, energy e efficiency that you have, right? Uh, 87, 78 TOPS per watt. So does it, uh, you know, include all the I mean, overhead from the peripheral circuit, ADC, DAC, and communications as well? So, so that, number, that number is from four chip, so including everything. Sure. Yeah. So this is very different because uh, it's not just the, if we only calculate the calculate array, it could be one or the high. Right, right. Yeah, there's another question about the, the material and the device, the type of devices for synaptic device, right? So uh, you mainly talk about the RAM. How about other type of devices like spintronics, you know, ferroelectric materials, tuning materials, 
what what about you know, those devices and what is your 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 opinion about those uh, the future of those devices? Yeah, I I, I certainly think that those devices are very uh, very interesting and attractive, and because you know ferro electrical you know very fast speed and low power and also spin charging is certainly the you know, physics is very clear and uh, and uh, and and also for two D you know it's much smaller. I think those are very very good. Um, for my, me, why I don't talk about this because for my group, uh, you know, we about 10 years ago, we started working with RM and uh, now we have the capability for the integration. And uh, so, so that's why we move forward to go to the chip and or to the system. We don't, we didn't stay only on the device side. And what we learned actually is very important because at least uh, for my opinion, at this moment, nobody knows which, what kind of device performance will be the best. Okay, because you can give a lot of requirements, then you can spend another 20 years to do that. But maybe a system doesn't require that. And, uh, and uh, so, so, so if you over accurate or over uh, high precision, that's just the high energy cost. So I think uh, the vertical, uh, you know, integration and the vertical uh, uh, optimization very important from the algorithm to the architecture to the circuit to the device, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I have one question. <coughs> okay. For the input and what about the input? You know, for the input and normally for the okay, now the digital computer, right? The input is very clear. For the even the uh, even the uh, driving uh, I say I say network, what how about the input? The input had had a convert, right? Con conversion, right? The input output. Very good question. So uh, input, uh, it's interesting. Our world is analog, okay? I, I think that most of you know, our world is analog. I think people believe that. Because, because the chip is, uh, uh, so we still, right now, we use the DAC to convert or rest. We, we still use that uh, for, for the chip. And uh, we, right now in China, there are lots of projects talking about the sensing, um, the computing together, okay? So, so some people are trying to see when from the sensor get the data instead of to the ADC, then send it to the chip, actually do the computing on the sensor. So in that case, you could be, what are your, what are your sense from the sensor directly do computing, then, then send it to the server. But for our case, at this moment, we're still focusing on how to make the SIM really function, really usable. And the but still our interface, most of them are still digital. So in this case, we still use DAC at this moment. But certainly, use analog to the computing. Just put the analog directly here is, is doable. And actually, we also do some brain machine interface work, try to use bring analog, analog signal to the memory system. We already do that. We, we did some work. It's actually, it, it can work. Yeah. OK. There are some questions. QA. Can you see the QA? Yeah, the, some, uh, some OK, audience uh, attendances. OK, give us this. How? Would you compare the perspectives of the in-memory computing to the quantum computing? Your comments. Okay, this is a very, very interesting question. Very good question. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I think, uh, think uh, is, uh, I think quantum computing is certainly is, is is very, very important. Is because it's a lot of new physics. It's a lot of things and uh, give us a lot of potential. Uh, but I think at this moment, uh, quantum computing. As far as I know, you know, most of the device has to be work on system has to work on a very cold, very low temperature. So that means, so from my limited understanding, that means at this moment, quantum computing will be more or less like a cloud, cloud computing. I mean, from the application side, they will be put in the cloud. You can access remotely, do some scientific work. So they probably still cannot go to daily life. Like you bring a quantum computer at your back, right? Then how to make this computer low temperature enough, I probably that's still tough. So they cannot go to your office. They cannot go to your library. You probably more like a, a big server at the same place computing do a lot of important work. But for computing memory, because all devices working at the room temperature, is everything seems compatible. So I hope they can come to your laptop. They can come to your smartphone. They can come to your watch. Okay, you can come to your future glass. So that's different. So they have different ways to use. And uh, for me, I think uh, my task is try to 
make the sim into a, some product in the next few years. That's my, this is my okay. dream. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more question. Uh, two more questions. Okay. Can you comment on the metrics of the electronic synapse for sparking your network? So try to compare the sim with the sparse network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. got comments on the metrics requirements. Uh, the electronic uh, synapse for spiking neural network. Uh, yeah. Spiking, okay. Uh, actually, uh, we, are, we have one work try to combine the memory with the spiking. I think actually there are lots of simulation work, but I think it's real cheap, still not too many. Uh, from our initial study, we find out uh, this uh, this. Uh, this actually, the memory is very good for the spiking neural network for this uh, uh, AR, you know, which just uh, we just discussed, discussed. This is actually very matched uh, easily and uh, can, can achieve much lower pore consumption. And because from our side, we, we don't see anything can block this way to happen. The reason we didn't do that, uh, did the patch paper, as I mentioned, we just want to merge the existing technology, existing algorithm with our sim technology together as fast as possible. Because spiking neural network, I think another challenge is say, uh, we don't find any existing algorithm is good enough for any product. So that's the, that, that's the something algorithm guide to work on. But for ANN, you know, there are already lots of existing algorithm has been proved, it can be used in lots of product. So that's one reason. It's more mature. That's one reason we choose to work with ANN at the beginning. But right now we are working with SAN right now. Okay. Okay. I have another. I have another question, uh, more okay. related to the application levels. Right. So we have seen, I think, a lot of work on the device and and on the circuit and even on the chip level demonstrated on Amnist. Uh, do you have any comment on the difficulties to scale to more, you know, like practical, or more complex problem, you know, on the on the chip level? A very good question. Very good question. I think uh, so. Sometimes when we have a paper or a few years back, people said, "Wow, this is just a toy problem." Like Amnesty, you mentioned, you know. So yeah. you, you're right. You're right. I think this is true. So actually, the chip we are developing right now, we are targeting on the image net right now. Yeah, I I think that this actually. Related, related with the density, just as I talked to, uh, I, I believe, actually, think about it like a, like a brain, if this brain only have four neurons, okay, or think of this brain have four billion neurons, certainly you will, you will believe this four billion neurons will give you much more uh, intelligent power, even because if four neurons, any neuron doesn't function, then the whole brain doesn't work. For four billion neurons, if you have one million neuron doesn't work, it's still, it's still okay. I think one is the percentage, one is also have this uh, total density. So this is, I, I don't have a theory to support that. This is actually, that's why I mentioned in the key challenge, actually I, want, I talk about this theory. I think the theory is very important. But uh, from our experiments, we find out uh, with a certain density, that means how many memories they put there, how many devices you are working to the computing is very important for this chip function. So to answer your question shortly, I hopefully in about a year I can show you the results with the chip to take to talk to you know, deal with the image data task. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How how many um, how many synapses do you need to kind of uh, processing image net? I think uh, probably uh, a few million to ten million. I see. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Oh, still more, one more question. Okay. One. Well, uh, what would be your view on the every level imp uh, implementation using three terminal transistor? Uh, this is very this is a very interesting question. And uh, three terminal device is also recently very popular, you know, because they can control a little bit more uh, neomorphic performance. I think uh, I would like to put this more like to the dendrite device I mentioned. As a, I, I think the dendrite device I, I mentioned all, about all work is actually that's one important field for neomorphic device. So you can have volatile, dynamic, non-volatile, you know, different way to 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 manipulate the device and to try to try to try to inspire by from the spring and achieve lots of things. But I think the challenge for that is how to make the high density integration. 
uh, in many cases, I think the transistor is still very important. Like in our case, we still use one T one R to do that. You know, in this case, and be, again because our group have our own agenda and the schedule, so that's why we didn't put too much work on that. We, but we still working on little on that. We have two students working on the new device, but most of our work are focused on how to make the system larger and the more more useful. Okay, thank you. I think Shen Yao has a question. Yeah, actually, I, I just want to uh, you know ask a little bit about the uh, algorithm and uh, device interaction, right? Because in this area, I think uh, that is something that's quite important, and it's not something that is widely investigated by too many people. So I just want to uh, get a sense from uh, you, right, Prof? Uh, you know, what is your uh, experience looking at the algorithm and device uh, code design aspects. Like, are there any uh, you know characteristics of the memory store device that you actually take advantage of to implement the algorithm, or do you actually tweak the algorithm in some ways to uh, be able to map the uh, algorithm better to the device? Very, very important question. Very nice. And uh, because I started from device, then I go to array, then go to chip. So from my perspective, if you at that time you need to deliver a array or chip, I think algorithm part you bring in as early as possible. Because uh, actually in my group, I think about five or six years ago, I have a postdoc actually, he, he has a background for the uh, algorithm. Actually he has a bachelor in computer science and a PhD in computer science. So to postdoc here. So he is actually purely to the algorithm. The reason because all the existing algorithm is based on digital. And the, your, so that's the Boolean logic, okay? Mm. And the, but your case is analog computing, in mean, most of the case, okay? Because, uh, because this, uh, this is not logic computing doesn't uh, work properly. So, so you, in that case, uh, so your, fund, your, your, your fundamental is different. And if you still use the same algorithm, your results are good. So we do a lot of trick on the algorithm. We actually do a lot. So we even publish a paper, some, many papers, actually every year we have a couple in the, algorithm conference or, or algorithm uh, journals. <laughs> so, so, so as I mentioned that like SBP is signed back propagation because when you do the learning, okay, you can do very fine tuning, say from one to 1.2 or from one to 0.9. But in my case, in the circuit, I only do up and down. So it, when you do up and down, you have to change your algorithm because this training algorithm is different. And you have, you have to know will this be good or bad or how much step for up and down. So you have the uh, algorithm side. So that's just only one case we do a lot. So I think mm. uh, if you only just do the device optimization only, in this case, I encourage you to talk to the system group together, you know, so you don't have to bring in all the experts in your, your group. Okay. Great. Okay, thanks. So. So I just have a, a little more, a little uh, maybe strange, a peculiar question, right? You know, like there's a lot of talk about how hot the microprocessor is as you scale to smaller and smaller technology nodes. Is this uh, temperature sort of efficiency something that you care about right now as you scale to 10 million or 100 million neurons? Uh, certainly, we, we always look at that because the reason, because this is is always the parallel computing, right? Parallel computing means you actually you need to pass the current. So, so because the voltage is actually not, I mean, current is very important. So we, when your current is big, your, your, your width of your, all the line wire, you need to be very, very wide. So this, this is always something we are looking for. And even at this moment, what we find out to achieve similar, similar computing power, our, our power consumption is at least 10 times lower than the, 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 the AC current. So, and uh, this is, and also, as I mentioned, I show you still two thirds are consumed in ADC DAC. So that's why next, uh, next part, actually, I'm trying to talk to experts, try to find out some innovation on the ADC and DAC and the innovation on the circular side, innovation on the data transfer. I think those will be important. That's great. I'm very happy to explore this uh, with you, actually. Uh, do a bit of that. So I guess the short answer is you won't be able to cook an egg with your with your sim uh, chips. You know, like uh, they can cook an uh, egg, right? They can fry an egg on the microprocessor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So so your processor won't be able to cook an egg because it's more. Not, not, not yet, not yet. <laughs> we, we 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 like it cooler. 
It was great. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? I think already time. 10 minutes. If no further more question. Okay, let's thanks. Okay, Professor, for this uh, exciting presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Hopefully, okay. after the, Hopefully it can after the COVID 19, <laughs> we would like to invite come here to give a okay, face to face talk and a face to face discussion. Maybe stick longer, you know. <laughs> okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.